So here's a little bit of 4K from the Sony Xperia Z5. But yeah, so let's go over what the heck I've all purchased now to go with the new setup. First off, I upgraded my tripod. I'll show you why. One, my old one, which I showed you guys in the last video, did not have a panning arm. And I gotta tell you, once uh, you get one that does panning, especially for a video, it's amazing. Like this is gonna be really nice for some smooth video. I'm excited. And of course, this one's got a whole heck of a lot more levels. The last one just had one of these levels. This one has a level here, a level here, and a level here. So you can make sure that you're level this way. You can move this up so the bubbles are all level that way. So if you're trying to get a level shot, you can do it. Anyways, so, something like right there should be level. Now, another cool thing about this one compared to the last one, let's pick up this camera and show you. Just clicks right on rather than the other one where it slid on. I'm not gonna try and take this off right now, but let's go over what I went with. I went with the Zeiss lens here, it's a 1670. So far, it's really good. I wanted to get the 18105, but everywhere in Canada is back ordered. And the only place I could think or find to get one in Canada was Amazon. And here's a funny thing. So this one place that I was looking at, if I would have bought it, they had like 15% restocking fees. And if, let's say I got a defective lens, I had to pay for shipping to send it back so they could swap it. I was like, nah, this isn't good. So I didn't bother with them. But so far, loving the lens. I've just got to play around with it more. There's so much you can do with it. I know that some people were telling me, you know, uh, or well, not telling me, but reading reviews, and they were, the 18105 is a lens to go with. But uh, I ended up with the Zeiss just because I could get it locally, and I wanted to pick up the lens and try it before I bought. And everywhere that I had people tell me they had people on back order for over two months, four months, I called Sony. Worst, uh, I hate to say it, but I've never really had really terrible customer service with them, but my gosh, they wouldn't tell me anything about uh, how or when their suppliers uh, were gonna get the back order. I even went on Sony's website and tried to buy it from sony.ca, the lens, and I got put on a back order from their own website. So I called and I said, hey, estimated time of arrival, I got some shoots coming up. And all they told me was, oh, we don't have a department that deals with that, so I can't tell you. I was like, really? I need to just know so I know if I've got one for an appointment. I was like, if I don't have it for that appointment, I gotta return the camera. Like, I'm gonna have to get a different camera. And then they're like, no, they're like, you could just return the camera then. We can't really give you any information on it because we don't actually have any sort of sales department because we let them all go. So Sony, you gotta get on that. You can't just uh, do that. You can't leave customers hanging like that. We gotta know how bad your back orders are, especially if we're buying it right through your website. Anyways, like I said, it's got the nice panning arm, so you can do some smooth shots up, down, and I also like the construction. These, uh, the feet levers right here, if you pop them all open, or toggles, whichever you want to call them, they are a lot more solid on this one. I noticed that. Easier to fold open. They don't feel like they're going to break as easy. So yeah. Other than that, we've got this, which is good. And then let's go over this you guys have already seen. This hasn't changed. I still love this bag. It's super cool. Can run, jump over stuff, climb over fences if you really needed to, you know, things like that. If you're into urban exploration, you know, other things like that, maybe some parkour. It's small, sits on your back, doesn't need a lot of room. And if you don't want to have your uh, MP3 in your pocket, you can always put it in some of the cushioning in here and bring your headphones out through there. Uh, there's the box for this one. Again, all that really comes in the box because the right now anyways, the 6500 here only comes in body form. No one actually sells it with a kit lens, which is fine. After hearing some of the craziness about how easy those kit lenses are to break, I'm kind of glad I didn't stick around with it. Apparently if you knock it pretty good on one side of the lens, like, I don't know which side, but if you go like that really hard, or something like that, you can actually jump the rail and then the uh, 
lens is kaput. I didn't know how, I, at first I was like, ah, it probably isn't that bad of a problem, but I was talking to a couple shop owners and saying that they've had them come defective out of the box. Apparently it's just a very fragile lens. And knowing me, if I am gonna be doing some urban exploration like I plan to, it's gonna happen. So yeah, it's just warranty cards, things like that. Comes with your one battery and your charger. That is one thing I'm surprised about. The charger on these things, man. Like, you pay so much for a camera, and then the charging block, if I have it here, uh, there is the lens hood. Wow. Look how, like, it's the thinnest charger ever. Like, the block itself looks good, but the wire for charging, it feels cheaper than a dollar store. Mi or, yeah, charger. Anyways, so then, of course, with this lens, you get the tip, so it can look like that. Ta-da! And then it comes with a leather case with like cardboard insert. So if you're going to be having more than one lens, you could, you know, shove it off to the side if you put it in here. Personally, if I was going to do that, yeah, I'd probably just put it right here and just keep it in here. But yeah, it's kind of cool. It comes with some piece of leather. Cool. And then, of course, warranty papers and whatnot in here. And that's basically it. Oh, one feature that I'll tell you guys about this one, which was throwing me off yesterday. So for you camera guys that are going to be obviously doing photos and stuff, uh, this has a menu option called screen effects. If you don't turn it off, if you're looking through the viewfinder and you're trying to set your exposure and stuff like that, so that way the picture's a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, uh, it'll actually trick you. So you'll set it to that perfect amount. You're like, oh. This is perfect. Take the photo, look through the viewfinder, say, okay, this image is good. Because if you try to go through the screen, everyone knows, can't really see it when it's a really sunny day out. So, either way, what ends up happening is if you don't turn that off, it's actually darker than what the viewfinder shows it as. So, if you take that picture, look through the viewfinder, you'll be like, oh, Good, turned out exactly how I wanted. You take it home, you bring it onto your computer, and you do have to correct it through software. If you want to do that, that's fine, but I found that after turning off that special effects in the uh, menu, it has it's definitely fixed that a little bit for me. I was reading up online about it because I was like, really? It was enough that I was like, why is it so off with this camera? I didn't have that with the A6000. And I didn't really notice it with the A6300, so I don't know if that had it, but I could definitely tell with this camera. But yeah, there's my sort of review. I've only been using it now for two days. I gotta take a lot more photos. So far, loving this lens. Gotta play with it a little bit more. Um, yeah. And of course, first thing I said is, wow, picked it up and I started zooming in and out and I found it to be very like sticky in some areas. But now after a day of shooting and bringing it in and out, it's definitely, it's loosened up. It feels a lot more smooth with the zoom. It's much nicer. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that I upgraded again. Again, I'd like to thank uh, the guys at Broadway Camera. They gave, not, they didn't give me, but they gave me a lot of good information on this lens. And then uh, Caringsdale camera, of course, sold me the camera and they've been very lenient. If you're wondering what I mean by that, I went from the 6,000 of, as I'm sure you've seen, to the 6,300 and now I'm at the 6,500. I just kept upgrading because the 6,000 didn't have 4K, the 6,300 didn't have the uh, in-camera stabilization, which I really wanted so that way you don't have to have one, a stabilized lens, and two, so that way uh, for video it's a little bit more stable. Now as you've seen with that footage, it's not the most stable, uh, or not, it wouldn't compensate for that without a gimbal, but you've seen that it was still a little bit jerky. That's still going to happen. I'm walking along gravel <laughs> with a camera in my hand, so just little things. Got to... Definitely invest in a gimbal next and some other fun stuff. But that is for the future. For now, we'll see what other videos I'm going to start filming here on the channel. Right now, I'm just trying to get used to the lens and the new camera setup. Thanks again for watching. Like the video if it helped you out and subscribe for more.